Thank you, Max. It's the future of manufacturing. The future of manufacturing is largely enabled by additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing changes how um, houses are being built, it transforms how electronic wearables, how shoes, how eyewear is being produced. And as we just heard from Carsten's example, it also disrupts how pills and medicine is being engineered and manufactured. Now we're going to talk about another um, rather traditional industry that is being put upside down by the application of additive manufacturing. It is the furniture industry. And with it, we're going to talk about um, some applications from interior design, from architecture, and uh, a lot more. So, therefore, I'm very excited to um, announce my co-panelists here. Um, they are not only uh, leaders in their industries, but also represent the major building blocks of the value chain which is needed for that transformation. There is Jay Rogers, the founder and CEO of Hedy, a company that tries to transform what, um, what is broken in the furniture industry. We have Lukas Jansen, the CEO and co-founder of Seed, a company that provides Jay with an entire fleet of robots to perform this mission. And we have Stephanie Frank, Senior Vice President at Siemens Digital Industries, who is heading the business segment at Siemens that is providing Jay and Lucas with the right technological foundation to um, engineer, to operate, and to scale those systems. So a warm round of applause for um, the panelists of the session, the future of manufacturing. So, yes. Jay, your company, Hedy, is aiming to transform the furniture industry. Can you tell us a little bit how you are actually um, doing that and why? The furniture industry has gotten very slow. It takes roughly a year to deliver furniture from Southeast Asia to developed economies around the world. And being human made, it's very difficult to predict how, how well the furniture will be made and how well it will last. So digitizing the furniture and making it makes it possible to be able to make it closer to the consumer. And so that is the reason why we're doing it. Maybe let's give the audience a short impression how such 3D printed furniture actually looks like. I'm sure not everybody has seen it so far. So here we have an example of, I think it's a planter's pot, potter's stool, some other chairs. And I think we also brought some um, pieces which go a little bit into more into the interior design. So um, I think it's a bar, right? It's a bar. It's a coffee bar. So um, th that furniture and uh, that pieces of interior doesn't really look like um, traditionally uh, designed furniture that you would get at a furniture retailer. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how such furniture is being designed? So when we sell this furniture, we find that a lot of the people who are the customers want to know what digital furniture looks like. So it's not only the fact that it's made in a digital method with a robot, but it's also that it can be displayed in a virtual environment. So what people begin to see is that, as you can see with this coffee bar, it was made to look like wind was blowing and it was blowing the front of it. Only makeable really with a 3D printer to be able to do it. And customers' responses to that are quite exceptional. It's not something they knew or imagined ahead of time. They don't know why a robot would need to make furniture. When you show them the result, then it is something that they desire and it's something that they look for. And so we're educating consumers while we are making these uh, robotically manufactured pieces of furniture and architecture. I learned that next week you are going to open your first micro factory for furniture production in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, is it right? Yes. So um, I think um, we brought a short sneak preview um, that everybody can see what actually to expect from um, this uh, micro factory. Looks like a big factory. It is a lot of robots printing there. 
We call it a micro factory because it doesn't have smokestacks <laughs> and uh, it can fit inside a city, but it's quite large. Yeah. So when I, from what I see, I think it's the largest installment of large format 3D printing systems. So what is behind your micro factory um, concept? What are you trying to achieve here? Forever in manufacturing, people have felt like you have to make a trade off of high mix of products with low volume or low mix of products with high volume. This factory, powered by Siemens and by Seed, makes it possible to do high mix, high volume, low mix, low volume, and everything in between. And we do it very close to consumers. There are 30 million consumers within a six hour drive in all directions. And this is where our furniture should be made. It should be made close to the consumer with a micro factory that's capable of doing the whole range of products. So, Lucas, as we can see here in the picture, um, it says our, um, your logo uh, on it. So you are providing Jay with the robots um, to um, equip his micro factories. Um, we are collaborating with you for quite some time on the topic of those Seed AM Flexpot, how you call them. Can you tell a little bit on how you came up with those robotic systems and how the partnership, what the role the partnership with Siemens played in that? Yeah, of course, gladly. So um, Seed and the adventure of Seed started uh, about 11 years ago. I think our relationship with Siemens started around eight, seven or eight years ago when we set out to build the biggest uh, 3D printer uh, for Europe. And that's when we uh, stumbled across uh, the Cinemera controller. Mm -hmm. We really desired a very powerful controller to do all the, the tricks that we envisioned to make large-scale additive manufacturing a reality, and specifically large-scale, because that is where we see the biggest demand is. If we look today at how large parts are made, whether this is furniture or boats or other things, really, uh, it's still very, very driven by highly skilled manual labor a very, uh, very high process costs for, for that matter. So um, that was really what we were aiming for and where, where we started our journey and our collaboration. But we also soon realized that the concept we had with this very large 3D printer was way too much uh, one size. And uh, we really noticed that the market demanded flexible solutions, hence also the name Flexbot. Um, and that's also where the, the Cinemera controller proved even more powerful. And that's when we started combining robotics and the Cinemera controller for large format 3D printing, and when we set out to incorporate different processes to the same platform, such as CNC machining, or sanding, or uh, visual inspection, and other, other processes, uh, because then you can truly deliver an end-to-end -end solution. And in that sense, the uh, Hedy example, Jay's example, is the perfect one, a, a true micro factory, and we're, we're immensely proud that we can supply to that. Um, your newest addition to the um, to your systems is uh, actually called the AM Flex Cube, which is not a robotic system but um, a more gantry style system. Uh, I think we also have a little video of a time lapse how um, how it's actually printing a part. What are you actually printing there? Uh, in this case, another another bar. We were at a um, uh, trade show, the JEC in Paris, and we wanted to make some some bespoke elements to show what the technology can do. Um, and uh, yeah, indeed, again, flex in a name, because while this is not a robot, we're aiming at flexible solutions again, scalable to cater to the demand of printing a lot of furniture pieces in one go, or to create even entire boat hulls or other large parts that the industry needs. So, Stephanie, um Lucas just mentioned he's using the Cinematic controller as a control platform for both of his uh, Flexbot and uh, Flexbot system, uh, Flexcube systems. Um, the Cinematic itself is known, uh, well known as a leader in the uh, machine tool industry, so for subtractive manufacturing such as CNC machining, milling and turning. Here we are talking about a 3D printing application and uh, also with robots and different kind of kinematics What makes the Cinemeric so suitable for this huge variety of applications? Yeah, first of all, um, we are quite proud um, that the Cinemeric is really capable also for that kind of operations. Um, it was always designed as an open um, universal technology platform for high precision, precision, um, precision part manufacturing. And the good thing is that you can use it in CNC controls, as you mentioned it, but you can also use it for additive production. And this is, I think, the 
one unique point, um, and the second point you mentioned it is really that we can show our end-to-end -end offerings, starting from AnnexCam over the Cinemeric, but also all the digitalization with the digital twins that we can do together. And with that, we are super proud that um, I think um, one and a half years ago, we also started to embed that into Siemens Accelerator, what is really helping customers like with your demands, with your requests to scale up as fast as possible because we can offer modular scalable um, solutions. So we have the Cinemeric um, with the Cinemeric one really being um, in the core and center, but we are building that in the complete ecosystem. So I think from what we've seen today already, um, the future of manufacturing is not many, much the future anymore. It already started. But I can imagine that um, there is a lot to come and this is just the beginning. So my next question would be, what is the newest innovation um, that you all bring uh, to the table to um, uh, advance this transformation of the furniture industries? Um, maybe Steffi, you want to start? Yeah, first of all, I think most of you have already seen it um, here at the stage. So um, the next step really goes into co-piloting. Um, this is something that we're intensively working on, how to embed um, the industrial co-pilot um, really in our applications to make it even more accessible, even more scalable. That's the one thing. And the second thing what we are definitely working on is how to integrate um, the robotics part even further. We just came out, um, I think it was three or four weeks ago, um, with a next robotic integration. And I think as you are using so many robotics in your micro factory, um, this is really that what we want to do, like the next um, innovation, but also how we then want to make it even more accessible with um, generative AI um, also in the future. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lucas, what about you? What about Seed? What's on the horizon for the flex pots and flex cubes? Yeah, so still the name Flex stays in the name, of course. So we're very much focused on making truly scalable systems and adding more processes to those platforms, which we really want to focus uh, being able to, to deliver those end-to-end -end solutions. And at some point, we want to have a com complete flow of all the uh, processes. And of course, at the core of that is the, the, the digitally driven process in that sense. And that's, of course, a little bit further out, but very exciting future of what AI can bring to the table there as well. Not only when it comes to design for additive manufacturing, but also when it comes to process control, machine learning, and, and, and making the, the manufacturing solutions more robust from that perspective as well. Um, so yeah, more, more processes and, and trying to add more value with, with our machines and to build more micro factories, not only for furniture, but for a whole bunch of other, uh, other industries. Uh, at least what I can uh, already light up a little bit is um, uh, we're very much targeting in the marine uh, industry to really go after uh, printing entire boat hulls. And we've recently launched our maritime application center where we're doing a lot of research with, um, uh, with various different uh, key players in that market to really go for the next step, what's possible for, for manufacturing boats. So boat, another very interesting example besides um, the furniture 3 really printing. Jay, what what uh, can we expect from next week's opening um, of the micro factory and what, what is there to come in the near term future from Hedy? It sounds so grand to say that you have the largest installation of 3D printing robots for industrial or commercial purposes in the world. Uh, it is a grand thing to see. I would love to invite you all to come and see this factory at any time you come through Florida. Eventually we will have them in many other places in the world. Um, and I think for me, the thing that excites me the most about the opening is the application of artificial intelligence that people can really feel and touch. In the last three years, many of us have had the opportunity to speak into a large language model and have it return something that's like a human conversation. Right now in this next year, the ability for a designer to be able to ask for a piece of furniture and have this system that is a collaboration of all of us to be able to deliver something that you can sit on, that you can eat on, and that you can use to look at, and it's visually beautiful, is what is going to happen this year. And that is a full promise of what AI brings. And it wouldn't be possible if we couldn't control the process first. And that really is the level of what's gone on in Cinemeric and in Seeds Robotics. It is controlling the process to allow artificial intelligence to do its job, to deliver a beautiful piece of furniture. And it's not a far cry from a piece of furniture to a boat 
or anything else that is made in the world, and that starts this year, three years after the GPT-3 moment, and now it's being applied to the built environment. So, a great use case, a simple use case, and this is what we'll see after the opening of the factory. Yeah. Maybe uh, one more question. Um, the basis for um, applying AI technologies um, to the use case, of course, is to have a fully digital integrated work, uh, uh, work uh, process chain first. I think Stephanie just um, commented on and stressed the importance of that. How actually are you uh, facing that? Is it something um, that is fully deployed yet? Um, are there some obstacles to overcome? What do you see with respect to the digital process chain? So the digital process chain requires process control, but it also requires a great deal of ingesting of data. Just to share, our first sensor integration on a piece of furniture delivered approximately 136 gigabytes in 10 minutes. That's too much data, and it isn't all the data that you need. So getting the right data and looking at it at the right time and then turning around and learning from it is really what we see now the challenge is. And it's not an all or nothing solution. It's not it works or it doesn't work. It is something that you can add a sensor and learn more. You can digest the data and then you can apply it to a foundational model to train it to do more. So it is definitely something that can be built piece by piece to improve. We expect to see our robots not be robust. We want them to be resilient. We want them to learn a little and do a little more. And today's industrial robotics have come down in cost The robot arms that we use are becoming less expensive, not more expensive, but the way in which they're resilient makes them more valuable. So we really can, can see um, the rising importance of data, of AI applications. Um, so I think we really can call this um, a futuristic added manufacturing approach. So um, since not everybody has probably the uh, possibility to travel to St. Petersburg uh, for the grand opening next week, I have something um, to offer for you. Um, one experience um, that we can uh, offer here locally in Germany, it is the Additive Manufacturing Experience Center from Siemens in Erlangen. Um, there we have a Flexpot system from Seed installed and we also have some furniture printed by Jay from Hedy there. So if you scan the QR code, it directs you to a website where you can directly um, book your uh, or request an appointment um, for our team in the Additive Manufacturing Experience Center. And we really look forward um, to your visits. Um, so please scan it, um, come over. We are happy to explain the details, um, of course, to all of you. Absolutely. And I think additive manufacturing is only one of many different topics which are um, told there about the future of manufacturing. So very uh, warm welcome to that. Marcus, I would just say on behalf of the partners here, that furniture was designed by a designer in England. It was sent to us. We put it on the robot in the first day that we got it, and we printed the table and the chairs. We then had a digital printing partner, Carbon 3D, that did the cushions, which are 3D printed, and then we cut the wood tabletop out with the 2D instructions. All the brackets, everything was printed in the structure, and that is an example of how to go from thought to design to piece of furniture with multiple components in 24 hours. Absolutely impressive, and I can really tell you that the cushions are quite comfortable, so the lattice structures in the cushion make it very comfortable to see them. So, thank you very much for joining our panel today. Thank you to the audience for um, uh, watching our panel. Um, I wish you a successful um, Hannover Messe remaining two days. Thanks a lot. Thank you.